Hi guys, it's Holly. Um, I'm the project manager at KP International Translators and um, we're just going to go through how to set up your Boostlingo interpreter account. You've possibly already attended an info session with one of us, um, with our team, and now it's time to actually set up your profile, which is the exciting part. So we'll just get straight into it. Um, I have a fake email account here. Basically what will happen is you'll receive an email titled Invitation to KP International Translators. That's come from us. Um, we have popped in your email address and this is your um, your link into the Boostlingo system. If the email hasn't been received with, within about 10 minutes of being sent from one of us, you probably need to make sure you check your junk or your spam folder, um, otherwise we can resend it. Um, so yeah, I would go straight into that email once it's been received and click accept invitation. The link will take you to the Interpret Manager online system. I'll quickly explain that Interpret Manager is the title that we use for the clients and then from our interpreter's perspective we call it Boostlingo. It can get a little bit confusing when there's two titles. Okay so I am currently um, I'm going to say I'm a, a male Korean interpreter named Harry Kim. Um, so that's my Gmail there. I'm going to pick a password. Sometimes the passwords can be a little bit confusing because they have all of these different things that they require. So a super important step is that you record your pass a password. Of course, um, you can change it later on, but there's nothing more annoying than forgetting your password every two seconds. So this says your re registration is complete. Please sign in. So Harry is signing in. <laughs> Just a quick, oh dear, hang on. This URL up here, um, you might want to save that link as well. You should have received some guides from us. They will have links to all these certain things like um, the URL to the KP International Translators Boostlingo dashboard, things like that. So check that out. Um, otherwise, you can go onto our website and there will be a link to get you into here to get you to access. Um, apparently, I must have been on an account where the time zone changed. All right. First thing you're going to do, put in all your details. So I'm sorry, this might take a second, but look, we're going step by step. Um, where do I live? Uh, South Perth, 6151. And when you're putting in your phone number, oh, just got to think about this. Hopefully it'll work. Remember to make sure that it's under Australia plus 61. I'm going to put my gender in. In the overview, please include your languages here. So, Korean, and I'll just write, or maybe I'll just write interpreter. Select your time zone. Perf. Um, I'm not going to upload an image right now, but I highly suggest that you do. As long as it's a professional photo, we don't want anything too um, casual. Okay, we now have access to our dashboard. I'm going into going to go into a lot more detail on the next video um, with navigation of all of these different um, places. But I think it's interesting to see from an interpreter's perspective their first fresh look at the Boostlingo dashboard. Um, I want to quickly point out that there is heaps of help if you need it. In that area and I will show you this navigation here. Um, this right here is a little help sign. How can we help you? Um, you can either go through tasks. <laughs> the reason some of these aren't available is because I haven't given this interpreter permission to take calls yet. 
And there are walkthroughs. So if you have forgotten how to create an invoice for us, you can get you can be walked through, um, and it'll tell you exactly what to do. You're never alone. You can always call us as well. Um, here is where. Well, at the moment, your name is interpreter six four eight. I don't know why. Check. Anyway, it should change at some point. Do I need to click on that? Sorry, this one. This is your desktop caller. This is the first time you'll be seeing basically what the app looks like. It's hard to explain, but basically if you want to take calls, you click that and you are now online. So you, you will be receiving calls from clients. This right here is any sort of notification. So if we've booked you in for an interpreting appointment, to attend a hospital, um, to make sure you're by your phone at a certain time, that will pop up here. Right, that's all I'm going to show you for now. Um, I'll just quickly, you'll see under configuration here, you have no languages yet. Um, perhaps I'll do that now as well. So when we first arrived, we were on dashboard. You'll see that there is no data to show at the moment. But let's give you some languages. So, Harry speaks Korean. Oops, I was meant to do English at the top. Remember that, English at the top. Very, very important note. Always make sure you put medical and legal here. For some reason, if you don't add those specific industries, um, you will not receive any phone calls from any legal um, companies or any hospitals. And of course, put your years of experience. There you go. Now, what will, oh my gosh. <laughs> Here we go, I'll show you how to edit. There we go. Basically what will happen is the KP admin will give you permission to now speak in these languages, or to, I should say to interpret in these languages. The next thing is to edit what qualifications you have. If you've done some sort of interpreting degree or diploma, pop it there. Um, if you have a NATI accreditation, great, that's New Zealand here, and that's American Sign Language, but we're just classing it as Auslan. Communication types is, I mean, technically you want to add all of them, so just in case. And with this, you don't need, oh, perhaps we should. No, you don't need to add your industries there. Um, if you add none, you should just receive anything. What happens now is the KP admin will give you all your permission to take all these different types of calls. Of course, it's up to you what you choose to do. Um, if you don't want to do simultaneous interpreting on site, don't choose that. Next thing is to add any documentation. So I would select perhaps my CV and pop it there or my NATI accreditation certificate. That's all I'm going to show you for now. I will see you in the next video.